Hey guys, just another blog about one of the things I'm repairing. I've already started tearing this down, but it's a National Instruments audio control one audio interface. So basically just a somewhat high quality audio DAC. Problem is the headphone jack on the front has an intermittent contact problem. So I guess what I'm gonna do is just open it up as I already started and resolder this jack on the bottom. Okay, the top cover is taken off now. Um, problem is I need to get to the bottom and there's a shield on it, so I need to remove every last screw in this freaking device to resolve the headphone jack. Um, anyways, let me just show you around the device real quick. Um, the top, whatever it is, it goes on like that. So that's kind of for reference. Uh, here are the three buttons. Uh, this thing here, these uh, six LEDs light up the ring in the middle. Here are the control LEDs. Looking at the board, we can see a couple of different th things. First of all, over here, the analog devices chip. That's a simple audio preamp chip. Then we've got a few buffers and operation amps. Here we have the uh, headphone and driver. Up here, you can see the heart of the thing. The CS4270 audio DACs. Uh, those are made by Cirrus Logic, support 24 bit at 192 kilohertz sample rate. After removing all the screws, which hold in the top part, which are only these two over here, we can remove, simply take it off as it is only held in place by some simple pin headers. And actually, a lot of them, but still, was pretty easy to remove. Nice construction so far. Now we can see the second board where we can first of all see a cypress chip down here. I cannot really find any data on it, but just judging from the location and what this thing has to do, it's probably a microcontroller or something with USB support, obviously. Uh, right next to it, the IC over here is a Silink CPLD, probably handling some glue logic jobs to convert to form a microcontroller, or maybe it's an integrated, uh, maybe it's directly a a USB sound card to just convert the audio protocols so that the ADCs and DACs understand it. Interesting thing to notice, as you can see down here on this board, on the lower board, we have our headphone jack and of course also our audio output jacks, but the da actual DACs and the headphone amp and everything is located on top board. These two chips here are the DACs, just to remember, and up here we have the headphone amp with, with its according uh, volume controls all these. So they're basically routing the entire audio signal through the complete circuit, which is not that cool in my opinion. Uh, it might have been more appropriate to separate digital and analog circuits on one board, but it might have been problematic in terms of uh, actual product layout. Um, however, one thing I note is you can see that there is a split in the ground plane going across here and only a couple of signals are actually crossing these boundaries. So my guess is that they are, they, I mean, they're national instruments, they should know what they're doing as they are specialized on that type of equipment. So I, my guess is that most of the digital stuff is down here in the middle, this middle ground plane area here. And then they're moving the DAC and ADC signals digitally through these pin headers over here, up to the top board, where we do the actual conversion. And then they actually run it through these potentiometers and then back down through their according pin headers, so either down here or down here, which at least keeps it somewhat separated. Although on this top board, I cannot really see any split ground planes. So up here, I cannot really see the separation between digital and analog. Although up here it's only data signals for the ADCs and DACs, so it's not that bad. So now let's take the last few screws off and see whether we can fix the headphone out jack. So here's the bottom part completely loose. As you can see, there's not much on the bottom. Same, by the way, for the top part, there are only the connectors, that's it. And well, I cannot really see any cracked joints underneath the headphone jack, but um, there certainly was the intermittent problem which which went away when I wiggled the plug, so I guess that's the problem. So I'll just 
redo this and then I'll test it and see whether it A still works and P whether it fixed the problem. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, the joints are redone, so now it's time to clean up the board and see whether it still works. Or maybe I'll test it first and then remove the flux. All right, it's back together now and it works again. Awesome. So no more problems. I can do whatever I want. Audio doesn't cut out anymore. So this repair was successful as well, even though, of course, the problem wasn't really hard in the first place. But I had to disassemble the device to the very last screw, which was, well, which sounds kind of unnecessary, but on the other hand, it's it, w it wasn't really hard. And this entire thing, it had like, I think, eight screws, which is really good. Okay, actually 12, but whatever. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.